Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today I'm back with a bit of an opinion and news piece that I noticed on Tuesday, but I hadn't really put all my thoughts into it. I was doing the news and is the fact that the new Fuji Color 200 actually has a lot of resemblance with some uh, Kodak products. And I'll say the order of things and how I've seen them. First of all, when I was preparing the news, I opened the Fuji USA and there the picture of the Fuji Color 200 new uh, seems to have silver caps on the image. They've done the new boxing and the new stuff like that, but you can't really zoom into the image that much because every time you click it, it keeps on showing on the page smaller, but if you zoom in like I am gonna do in the video, it actually looks like silver caps because they have a roll of Superior 400 next to it and that one has black caps. That showed me that why is it using silver caps if that's a problem Kodak is having and not Fuji. Fuji's always had black caps and they haven't announced any silver cap or problem or distribution or metal, anything. So that was the first thing that threw me off, but I decided not to throw some fake news or some weird suggestions on the news. I said Fuji, to, uh, Fuji Color 200 was the new rebranded C200, which I actually have here. We have some in Europe. And after that, it seems that people went into the uh, PDF charts that Fuji gives for, you know, the uh, spectral color and the, you know, the different layers and the response. I'm not uh, an expert in that at all. And I didn't go through them comparing them to old ones and not, but it seems like some people on Reddit did and it looks like Fuji Color 200 is an exact match to Kodak Gold 200, which is extremely strange. If you actually compare the C200 to the new Fuji Color 200, they have nothing to do but if you compare it to the gold, it's exactly the same. And um, I'm gonna throw on the screen a GIF that someone on the Discord one more st uh, stop made because it's exactly like dragging the, the charts on top and it matches 100%. And this throws me off because first, yes, we know Fuji's been kind of like disarming their Fuji divi uh, film division. And I've always said that maybe not, who knows, because there was no actual proof of anything. They won't show anybody, they won't talk to anybody. Like I mentioned in the news, Fuji doesn't even talk to Fuji itself sometimes. Like sometimes Fuji USA says some things and then the Fuji Japan does a different thing. So who knows what's happening internally in Fuji. Uh, their Japanese company basically sealed, uh, light sealed to any rumors or anything. But that's really rare to see these canisters. Then they have been having problems with supply of C200 here in Europe. Like I said, there's back orders big time, but now they announced this Fuji Color 200, which has also been available in other markets. I didn't know about this, found it on an article online about two years ago. Someone was doing a review of the Fuji Color 200, which guess it was Fuji Color 200 in some markets and C200 in others. Um, and Kodak itself has been having problems supplying, uh, you know, color film, especially consumer film because they're being, I guess, focusing more on the professional line. So to have Fuji now have Kodak Gold inside and maybe not supply film is really strange. Plus we saw the disposables that started having uh, the silver caps on the film that was some CN400, which was the same as Lomography, which we know is Kodak Gold in 400 and so on. It's been very confusing. Uh, at all. I've asked uh, Kodak Lyris and to let me know about this. They haven't answered yet, so there's no official word. Last time I talked about the caps on the point and shoots, I got told by some third party, not Kodak Lyris, that basically uh, there was a big supply or surplus of film in China. Someone put it in the Fuji cameras and that was it. It was nothing to do with Kodak Rochester or Fuji or anything. It was some Chinese, uh, you know, manufacturer that put them in the disposables and put them out the door because I guess they weren't getting uh, film supplies uh, coming in. But it's really strange that they would match the silver caps, the match the PDF charts basically match 100% with Kodak. And it's really strange for a couple of reasons. Kodak Rochester, the one that makes the film, that sells the cinematography film, uh, the double X, the, uh, the 500T, the 250D, which are made for the Hollywood movies, is the one that makes the film, but Kodak Alaris is the one that sells, the distributes the film. So not the cinematography film, the still photography, the Kodak Gold, the Portra, the Ektar, all this film, Ektachrome and so on, is distributed by Alaris. And Alaris has been having a hard time getting film in their hands because Europe is out and half the states is out sometimes and so on. So why is Kodak, be it Rochester or Alaris, sending film to Fuji to serve their stock in the US market or any other market, 
when they can't keep their own demand and supply and prices and so on. It makes no sense. So that's why this is a bit of an opinion video and a news video is like, I don't understand what's happening. Uh, if Kodak does, Kodak does have basically the grip on the color market. They can do whatever they want. If Fuji is coming out, they have all the control. Why give it to Fuji? Why give it to Lamography? Why give it to anybody out there that, you know, is making, selling Kodak branded film as their own and by rebrand or not rebrand, is why don't you take control of the film production, be it Alaris or Kodak Rochester, and keep track of that. And if Alaris is not aware of this happening, that brings an internal problem of what the hell is happening at Kodak, which has been a bit of the feeling for a few years, because we do all know that we all want Kodak under one roof selling film and not photocopy machines or batteries or digital cameras or phones called Ektar or Ektra or whatever it was. Uh, we want Kodak making film, concentrated on film, and that's about it. But this doesn't show that that's happening. I cross my fingers that the film community will keep having Kodak, that hopefully someone one day will just buy the film division and keep making cinematography film and keep making still photography film and me still make uh, sheet film, be it four by five, eight by 10, whatever sizes, and keep that supply of color film. But this is not looking good. And it's not looking good that Fuji is walking out of the way or they made the mistake and checked the charts of the gold. Please, Fuji, let us know. But that's really, really strange to see Fuji Color 200 with the same charts as Kodak Gold. We want Kodak Gold. I'm sorry, Fuji, if you're not making film, just drop it all together and let Kodak do their thing, keep supply steady. Hopefully, maybe if they sell without having to mark down so other people can mark up, they can keep the prices a little lower and we can all keep shooting Kodak for color film if we want or Ilford black and white or whatever film of choice we have. But yeah, this is a really strange move on the internet. Like I say, uh, thank you to the people on Discord for pinging me this morning. Uh, I basically woke up to this. People have sent me emails, so thank you for those too. Uh, some people uh, sent me the Reddit uh, thread too, so thank you for everybody letting me know. I am very curious what the hell is happening. If I do get official word from Alaris or Kodak Rochester or Fuji, which would be the first time ever, I'll let you guys know in the news probably. But yeah, very strange. I don't know what you guys think, but it seems very strange. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry for this quick uh, news uh, thing about Fuji and Kodak I thought was important to address and see you in the next one.